Good afternoon and um, <clears throat> welcome to this Auditor Cash session uh, presented by myself, Mark Harrison, and my colleague, Brian Morgan. Um, we'll just kick off with a little introduction as to our, our companies. Uh, mine is the Association of Credit for Central and Eastern Europe. Um, we're, uh, we're a professional body representing everybody working in order to cash, um, <clears throat> offering professional qualifications, e-learning, training, coaching, mentoring and consultancy. Um, and uh, the reason why we, we set up the association really was uh, because as we're, we're talking about every company's single biggest current asset, it's an area that we believe is is not a back office function. And as I'm sure most people are finding now that cash is king and um, the, the trade receivables and everything connected to it is, is vitally important. Uh, as it says here on our right hand screen, um, we believe that uh, two and a half percent over dues um, maximum is what every company should aspire to at all times. Uh, Brian, a little bit about Romilia. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, my name is Brian Morgan. I work for Romilia, but uh, prior to that, I was 25 years as a credit professional. Romilia was actually started uh, almost 12 years ago in the last recession uh, by finance professionals who were having a problem with their cash allocation solution. Remilia stands for Receive It, Match It, Learn It, Automate. And uh, not the ideal time to create a new business, some would say, but absolutely, uh, Remilia was created to solve a business need. And as Mark said, cash is king, but never more so than in a crisis, because whilst everyone knows uh, cash is important, you don't realise it until you start running out of cash. And Remilia uh, was formed uh, and has been built and continues with that ethos of finance professionals building solution for finance professionals in the management of, of cash in the order to cash process. So delighted to be with you. Thanks, Brian. Um, as we go forward from here uh, in our, our short 25 minute presentation, um, everything that we talk about um, when we talk about credit um, it means the whole kind of order to cash or prospect to cash cycle um, and that every part of it so risk new accounts credit checking right the way through to cash allocation um, all, all of it is totally interlinked um, and any anywhere where there's a, a silo or these are not interlinked it's um, it's not going to work to its maximum uh, effectiveness so um as we're all aware right right now we're going through a time that is um particularly unusual um something that many of us have not seen before or did all, none of us have seen this particular kind of situation before but it's safe to say uh that every 10 or 12 years there is a um there is a global crisis. Um, having been working now for the best part of 40 years myself, I think I'm on my, my third or fourth um, recession and finance crisis, banking crisis. So it's fair to say that um, these situations happen frequently. Um, so the storm is brewing and what, what we're saying here is a bit of background, bit of background noise there, bit of, bit of back banging in the background there. Thank you. Um, so the, the storm uh, that's coming, which is going to, which really is going to comprise of the recession that's going to come out of the current situation. Um, there is going to be probably a rising cost of credit, um, of borrowing money, which often is to compensate for um, short term borrowing because trade receivables not being collected quick enough. So cost of credit is probably going to increase. Uh, I was reading this morning that there's most likely going to be inflation on products and Brexit as well, which, although nobody actually kind of knows how Brexit's going to, uh, how it's going to look, um, rest assured when it happens, it's going to have a huge seismic effect on every single company's buying and selling. Um, and it's quite possible that all these things will happen at the same time. Uh, and indeed, over the next six months. So this is our future for the next couple of years. Uh, sorry, there's um, a, bit of, a lot of noise in the background again somewhere there, so uh, it's a bit difficult to hear. Um, 
so all these um all the things we say here in the circles uh the slower payments pressure on sales risk of insolvencies and always particularly in the shared service center area there's a project pressure to reduce costs means that cash flow forecasting is absolutely essential uh brian if you'd like to take over please yeah thanks mark uh I think one of the things that uh, we have all seen is we've started to do things in the crisis that perhaps um, we would not have uh, planned or expected to do. I think about the number of organisations that are uh, optimising people working from home, where in the past that, that, that would not have been a thing that we would have cho chosen to do. So unexpected events can be the change catalysts that we need to make positive changes. And, and like Mark, I was um, fortunate or unfortunate to be part of the last recession in, the, in 2008. And for me, I wanted to use that as, as an operational credit manager, as a catalyst um, for change, because I didn't want to carry on doing what I've always done. Um, and just as, as one of my old bosses once said to me, you just need to work harder. Well, we all know that that's not the answer. And, and whilst everybody's talked about working smarter, what does that actually mean? And sometimes just being smart about what we've always done is not the answer. It's absolutely about what is that catalyst that we're going to do to make a change. And at that, if we go on to the next slide, Mark. And at that point is from my own department of, of what, 100 people in, in Veolia, we decided to create our own credo, a vision, mission and, and beliefs and our vision statement was to be recognised as a leading credit management department by being better tomorrow than we are today, through continually developing and improving our people, processes and our services. You know, and, th and this is the challenge that we all face today, is that whilst our organisations will be under pressure to reduce costs, how as a shared service function or as a credit or finance department, how are we going to add value to our organisation and how are we going to manage that massive and most important asset in the business, debtors. Because debtors can be the lifeline for a lot of organisations to free up working capital that is needed. And, and Mark uses the 2.5% the measure um, within his organisation as a benchmark. That's got to be our aim and our objective. And by doing what we've always done is not the way um, to manage in this crisis it's it's using this crisis this opportunity to do something different to do something better and that was our mantra really as to being better tomorrow than we are today and how is that we can't just rely on hope the that we get to month end and our kpis have improved what are we going to do today that's going to improve tomorrow to improve next week so our important performance in um improves we collect more cash reduce our bad debt provision and the two critical things is people and processes how are you going to improve and manage your people today how are you going to improve and manage your people whilst they work from home and they're not in the office for you to go and speak to face to face how are you going to improve your processes you know and whilst everybody's talked about automation and rpa in the last few years what about the catalyst that can change intelligent automation that will make a difference to your organisation? Thanks, Mark. There we are. So that's what we uh, we say that is the people operate processes to produce results. So as as always, it's a combination between the the people, the talent, and the technology. And when you get both of those running at their absolute best then you get the best results. I think one of the, <clears throat> perhaps one of the challenges that we'll face today, or indeed that we're facing now, is where many companies are realizing that the, the, there hasn't been enough investment in talent and technology, and the knowledge and awareness right now, what is needed to steer through, uh, through this situation, is not as strong as it should be. Um, so I think this is a great opportunity to reflect on uh, what's happened in the last few years, maybe some bad habits, um, and to say that um, this can't happen again. 
so it's it's essential that the the people are upskilled um to be more business aware but also when 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 technology is implemented that um everybody is aware really of what the technology can do to get the the best out of the technology you have to understand the business process what's going into the technology and what comes out the other side so this is um as i said earlier really just a summary of what we do um a lot of training to support that um including our conference coming up in september and various other uh, things which are, are on our website so but really um I think perhaps to, to hand back to Brian for a second. Yeah, so uh, Tom Peters is a management guru um, in the 80s and 90s. And his, his, this was his, his um, expression was, excellent firms don't believe in excellence, only constant improvement and constant change. And, and, and going back to my vision statement at Veolia, what we said was that if we are still um, performing a process or a task the same as what we were doing 12 months ago then we've not improved we've not changed we've not looked for a different way a better way of performing that task so always looking for those marginal gains but what is it that we're going to change how do we create the new norm in this situation it's only by driving through that excellence through our people and our processes so you know relying on somebody like Mark to come in with a, a different viewpoint and a different expectation that actually inspires people to want that excellence in their own performance and by the tasks that they perform. Next slide, Mark. Coming up. Yeah, so how can we, you know, we talk about our people and our processes. So Mark can improve your people by is, is 30 40 years of experience but also the, the knowledge and, and expertise that he's built from working with so many organizations uh, in the association over the last 10 years by uh, in, empowering your people by educating them and training them and, and setting up best practice uh, conferences so this is the time to invest in your people from a familiar perspective we can improve um, your people and your processes in a number of ways. And the first one I'd like to talk about is the 80-20 rule. You know, stop for a moment and review processes and see how much time people um, are spending on repetitive tasks that add no value. That is a massive chunk of our day. And, and, and there's a saying from one process expert that if you put a good person in a bad process the process will always win and our people are great are committed and they will find workarounds to make sure the job gets done and i'm sure that you've seen that in this time over the last few weeks the commitment and and the the passion that your people have, have had in making sure the job gets done i was on a call last week where the people are saying that productivity has increased during the lockdown for a number of reasons but how do we keep that and make that the standard? And that's the 80-20 rule. So we've got a cash allocation solution that will take away 70 to 80% of the boring repetitive tasks and let the robots do that, let the machine learning do that so that your people can then focus on the value added tasks. And we go back to cash. Cash is and will be critical at this time. And one of the key things will be your people interacting and engaging with customers to understand when payments will be made. But more importantly, the management of risk. So understanding where the customers are in this time and, and, and the availability of their cash to pay you. Now is the time. Now is the time to, to review what we're doing about investing in our people and investing in intelligent automation. And for us, at Remilia, we, we've used this time to uh, look at our deployment process. We can deploy remotely and we can do that within four weeks. So now is the time to invest so that your people and your processes are being changed at this point for the outcomes and the, and the demands that the, the storm that is, is brewing will come against us in, in organisations. 
but we will still be expected in our finance and our shared services and our credit departments to deliver and drive through the value that our stakeholders expect. So for us, it's about empowering your people to focus on the value added activities. And, and, and one last point is that the, the, the difference between intelligent automation and RPA is that it provides powerful analytics that provides wisdom. We have lots of data. We have lots of data in our ERP systems, in our spreadsheets, and in, in our organization. But do they provide wisdom? And, and one, one picture on that uh, screen is about a satellite, sa sa satellite navigation system. I use that all the time. Not only for places where I don't know where to get to, and, and that will be important in this time because we've not been through a, a pandemic crisis like this before. So nobody knows what the course and the, and the way out is. We, we're learning all the time. So we need wisdom. But intelligent automation absolutely uh, turns that operating process and gets rid of the 80-20 rule, as we said. But it also, I use that satellite navigation. Even though I know the way home from any destination uh, in the UK to my house in, in the middle of the UK, I will use it even when I know the destination because I, I know that there could be trouble on the road on the way home. So rather than getting stuck on a motorway or a highway, I want to know if there's a problem as soon as I can. And that's like managing credit, managing risk. I want to know the customer behaviors that are changing. And that's the, the difference that a solution like Remilius can bring to organizations. We can highlight the changes in payment behavior, in sales behavior, and so that you can make it more wise and uh, powerful decisions as quickly as possible. Thanks, Mark. That's more or less towards the end there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and, and just to finish, sorry. This last slide is uh, a picture of Roger Bannister who I'm sure most of you know, ran the four minute mile, ran the mile under four minutes and was the pers first person to do that in the mid 1950s. Bannister was a doctor and his peers, his friends, his colleagues were telling him to run a mile under, under four minutes would actually cause him serious health problems. In fact, some were actually saying he could possibly die. His mindset was different. His mindset was, we can do this and he worked a way out of how it could be done, and he did it. I want to inspire you by looking at in, um, a different way, by investing in your people and your processes, that you can make a difference that you probably wouldn't have thought about or needed to three or four months ago. And the key thing is, the likes of Mark and myself have been in recessions like this, been in difficult situations, and, and we can share our experience we don't just work for organisations and tell you, uh, you know, from theory, we've been there, we've done that, and, and our solutions, our practices, uh, Mark's um, solutions that he offers have born out of our, our own experience. An amazing thing about Bannister and the four minute mile was within a year of him breaking that four minutes, over 50 people also did the same. And so, you know, the point is, you're not the first, you're not the only ones. We're in this together and we can share our experiences to help you break your four minute mile. Mark. Thanks, Brian. Is, is there any, uh, any questions uh, based on what we've spoken about so far? We have around about five minutes or so left. There's no questions coming up at the minute, Mark. No questions yet. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go back towards the beginning uh, and just talk through <clears throat> really where the the combination of uh, talent and technology is at every every part of this cycle. Um, if we think about, if, and I would just go through them um, from the risk perspective, uh, from new accounts or indeed existing accounts, it's obviously important to review their health uh, in partnership with a, um, a credit rating agency. Um, 
and the, the facilities now are that the, their information can be interfaced so it can be updated in real time. Um, likewise with, with the database, I think now, now is probably a good time or any time's a good time, but now is an opportunity to review the actual quality of the database. Now, many people will say that this is somebody else's responsibility, but actually this is where most invoice disputes actually occur. Um, through duplicated accounts, which which means they're wrong invoicing or wrong pricing, um, so many um, and and technology can be used to actually bring this data out to look at it. Um, working with a um, a credit reference agency, you can have parent child uh, relationships, so you can see all the relationships of all the companies in the portfolio together, and. From a shared service center perspective, it is essential that this is done across all countries, business units and territories, not just within country, because it, it will be found that there's a lot of common customers and likewise on accounts payable, there'll be a lot of common suppliers too. Um, moving around into invoice dispatch, uh, one of the things I've heard a lot in the last few weeks um, is that so many companies still send invoices manually and the working from home uh, situation has really highlighted the, that as a huge weakness. And now in 2020, there is no need for any company to send invoices through in paper at all. Um, and there are some very good suppliers out there who, who not only send invoices in PDF, but create repositories so the customers can come and get the invoices themselves. Not only the invoices, but also all the associated documents. So. Uh, consignment notes, proof of delivery, credit notes, if there are any contracts, if that's possible, everything can be put together. Um, the bit um, that Remilia particularly focus on and um, is where a lot of the intelligence and the wisdom is, is between cash allocation and collections. Now, there is so much information in cash allocation uh, that often is, is overlooked and it's just seen as a as a manual process. But short payments, disputes, non-payments, late payments, there is a there's so much information in there that feeds back into the collection team. And this is one of the things that Remilia specialise in, is showing the when customers are paying later, um, it, it feeds directly back into the collections team, which as we said right at the beginning, one of the areas that the senior management are going to want right now is um, to be able to predict cash flow. Uh, so cash allocation is a huge source of information. Uh, when you look across all your customers, you'll see where you have common customers, you'll often find that there is um, different payment methods, different payment terms, even though it's your company selling to another company, albeit in different business units, uh, different countries maybe. Um, Moving in also the, the disputes area, again there's so much information on there and by performing effective root cause analyses that can, that can also lead right back to obviously why these disputes are happening with the reason to actually stop them happening which again obviously leads through to a much improved cash flow and effectiveness. It's, 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 I guess many of you have taken part in lean processing or lean, lean management uh, training and uh, the, the, every everything within the lean process can be applied to every single stage here of the order to cash cycle. So um, is there, a, so I think we're, I hope that's, uh, that's been of interest. I, I think we're more or less getting towards the end of our time. Uh, Brian, is there anything you'd like to add to sum up? No, just thank you and, and, and my, my key message is now is the time for us to do something different in the order to cash credit management process, invest in our people, invest in our processes. Thank you. So if you'd like to get in touch, this is us. Um, we very much look forward to hearing from you and uh, thank you again for, for joining us today. Um, stay safe and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. All the very best. Thank you.